Hey, what's going on guys? Alex here with TFL Off-Road and we've got Case behind the camera today. We're doing a fun video. We're here at the Onyx Off-Road course at Tumbleweed Ranch and we have what is probably the most capable beastly vehicle that has ever shown up to the course. This is the Polaris Razor uh, XP Pro R and this thing is crazy. We've got Fox live valve suspension and we have a 1997 cc inline four cylinder engine that makes 225 horsepower over 200 horsepower well over 200 horsepower in this machine so this is a pure sport vehicle um no tow hitch no you know dumping bed or anything like that like you've seen on some of the other side by sides that have made it through the course um, but we do have is a lot of power and some pretty knobby maxis tires so uh, if anything's going to make it through the course over the winter when there's tons of snow it's this right here so we're going to see if it can make it through yeah because otherwise we've closed the course to the public we're not having anybody come out and film videos on it right now just because it's so slick not really not really ideal for off-roading no it? it's not we don't want to be damaging vehicles and throwing your guys's cars into trees and stuff um and snow can be dangerous for sure so yeah it's been a while like case said since anything's made it through the course and as you can see we've had a few fresh storms in the past week or two so should be some good snow back there yeah so we're gonna brave the cold to see how the razor performs it's just over 20 degrees and uh yeah we're gonna be uh, a little cool so these seat belts these are pretty substantial it's a whole harness yeah we have a whole harness system here and uh i actually like these harnesses because you feel really secure in them but it's not like a crazy latching system so just one latch and you're in you're buckled in ready to go yeah here i'll hand you the camera yeah and uh you can go ahead and slide mine on as well it's uh, definitely easier than a lot of harnesses that you have to buckle from the bottom and from the sides all the way into the middle because it is just this one latch to get it together. And uh, yeah, it definitely feels pretty secure. So yeah, this is uh, got some good tech in it. So we'll start it up here. Pretty traditional gauge cluster here for Polaris with your uh, tachometer and speedometer and then a screen in the center where you've got all your other info. Uh, I think it's telling me it needs an oil change right now, so it needs service soon, but uh, yeah. can cycle through all that, fuel gauge, everything like that. This is a really impressive bit of technology is a ride command system. Ride command is awesome. I really like ride command. Yeah, I mean, we've even got our elevation here, so you can see mile above sea level. We're facing southwest. We've also got our current speed there. We can even see what wheels we're engaging right now. And your different modes. So we've yeah. got, it looks like a setting for a sport mode, a rock crawl, and an S mode. So probably sport race and a rock crawl, although it doesn't seem to actually want to change up here on the screen, which is interesting. It is, however, changing over here on the center display. So race, rock, and sport. And I think we're probably going to want to be in a rock today. Yeah, because we're going to be doing a little bit of crawling. So should we, uh, oh yeah, look at that. Yeah, you've even got gauges for engine temperature. Here's your suspension screen. So you've got a little G meter. We have this Dynamics X button on the steering wheel, which when you press that will stiffen up look the springs. That. Get ready for a, a jump. So <laughs> that yeah, is cool. kind of stiffens everything up. And yeah, just a ton to go through here. Um, Here's your gear selector. I, uh, I'm not a huge fan of the straight up and down. I like the Honda version of this where it's gated so you know exactly what gear you're in. But right. Nevertheless, it works. Now with this much power, the thing I'm realizing really quickly is that it'll spin really easily so i gotta be light with the throttle otherwise we're gonna be spinning wheels all day yeah so uh we are in two-wheel drive yeah and i'll leave it in two-wheel i think for a little bit so we yeah can, uh, at least until we need to come out of it so this is seeing the course in rare form we we have not run it since it's gotten all this snow so 
Uh, yeah, hopefully we don't go sliding off into, uh, I don't know, something where we don't want to be because, yeah, traction is definitely going to be a big issue today. So here we are at Dirty Deed and definitely not completely frozen over. I don't think this is going to be much of an issue for this. No, I would doubt it. Let's go for it. Yeah, we're gonna need four wheel. So now we're in four wheel drive. <laughs> no problems at all. Oh yeah. in four wheel. Now we're at David's Folly. This is, uh, I think, might be the hardest obstacle for this vehicle here. We'll see how deep the other stuff is, but the thing that's annoying with this is it's got a really long wheelbase. It's hard to turn. And with these harnesses, it makes it really hard to kind of get your head out and look where that back wheel is, which is what you want to do on this obstacle. So we'll take it real slow, make sure we don't go sliding off a cliff here. <laughs> Let me know if you want a spot. I will. A little sketchy. Woo! <laughs> All those snow is helping us slide yeah. around a little bit. Definitely makes it easy. That actually wasn't too bad. I no. think the snow helped us a bit. Snow there. helped us. We definitely slid the back end a little bit. Oh, you want to try and make it up here? Oh, we're doing it. We're doing the whole course. Come on. <laughs> this is steep. This is 34 degrees, I think, and it's snow on top of slick rock. So I'm not going to go crazy. If I get to the top of it and think it's not going to happen, I'll, uh, I'll back down. Yeah, I mean, but... the thing that we don't want to happen is to end up getting slid sideways and come down the hill at too much of an angle because that's how you flip. Exactly. So. Yeah, we'll just take it real slow. Yeah, we'll give it a shot. Oh. So he might be burning rubber a little there. Yeah, that looks like a belt. So, I think we're spinning the rears. And I don't want to break Polaris's machine. So, here's part of the issue. Uh, We've got a bush right behind you. Okay. I'm, uh, I'm in low range now, locked up, so we'll see if that makes a difference. Oh, well, it's a lot of angle. Oh, he's getting further, though. So the hardest part of this is this lip up at the top, which you can't see super well because it's covered in snow, but he was making good progress. Not gonna happen. Yeah, I mean, you made good progress when you got up to that point, but that is not the hardest part of that by a long shot. No, when I got off there and kind of came to a stop, I had to give it a little more throttle and that pushed the back end out to the left and we've got a steep drop off to the left, so. Um, this would do it no problem if we didn't have fresh snow, but in, you know, this slick stuff, we yeah. have better tires would probably make it up. Yeah. And this entire video is made possible thanks to our friends over at Revzilla. Not only do they do motorcycle gear, they also have a whole selection of side-by-side -side gear and parts. So if you're looking for some riding gear like this helmet and goggles I'm wearing now, head over to Revzilla.com. Right, now we've got Nathan's crack. Should be yeah, pretty Nathan's easy. Nathan's crack, which is approach and departure. The wheels on this are like right at the front and back of the machine, so I don't think we're gonna have too much of an issue. No. I've got the uh, 
front and rear locked. I'm in the high gear. Let's see what it does. Easy. <laughs> Too easy. Oh man. Are we going through Cottonwood Creek? I think so. What do you think? Let's do it. Let's do it. So this is all rutted out. Look at those tracks. That's, uh, I think, mostly from when the two of us came here with that Covens. Yeah. Maybe a little from the Bronco Andre did after, but most of that's from us. Well, the nice thing is that in the winter, there's not so many bugs here. All right, so here we go. I'm going to take it with a little momentum, actually, because I think that's the best chance of not getting stuck. Oh, and it's got a wide turning radius, but we made it through no problem at all. What do you think? This is going to be the tricky part. Let's, uh, <laughs> let's, let's see. All the tech I have, we're going to go front and rear locked, low gear. Yeah, just give ourselves every opportunity we can to get out of here. A little drop over that log there. Back should be coming down. There we go. Whoa, that's scary! You that got that back terrible. tire in the water deep. Huh? You got the back tire deep in yeah. that water. Woo! <laughs> yeah! A little bit of momentum did it. Yeah, it made it look easy. How high was that front right? Uh, it was at least a foot off the ground. It felt like it was four feet off the ground. <laughs> it was up there. Tommy's demise? Yeah, let's try it. Let's do it. So, I think if we do the hard side, we may very well get stuck, but, uh... Yeah, and a recovery in the snow is not ideal. No, but I also think the easy side is just going to be too easy. It's a tough call. Let's go for the hard side. Okay. I'm a little nervous. Yeah. But I'm going to take it with a little momentum, and I've seen, like, gladiators and broncos do this, so... If, if we could do it in the snow, that would be impressive. Yeah. Cause we, I mean, we got an ATV, a four wheel drive ATV stuck in there yeah. in, in just the regular mud. But honestly, the snow and that mud being frozen might, might make us better off. Yeah, it might give us a little grip when that snow packs down. So yeah, I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna drop in there and try and keep some momentum. I don't wanna ever come to a stop. Yeah. Cause I think if I come to a stop, we're doomed. Yeah. Um, but and then yeah, we're gonna have to recover it. Let's go for it. I wanna do the ultimate test here. So. Let's do it. Let's do it. I guess it's not that frozen. There's still a good bit of water at the bottom of it. So this, uh, yeah, this is gonna be tricky. All right. This may be a giant mistake, but you don't know till you try. You ready? Let's see it. Yeah! That was sick! That was impressive. Flung a lot of mud up into the air, that's for sure. <laughs> but we've had so many vehicles get stuck in this obstacle right here. And that just powered through it, no problem, in a Even bone stock vehicle. And I don't think there's any car, truck, SUV, off-roader on the market that's bone stock that would do that that easily. That's pretty impressive. And just goes to show you how capable this crazy side-by-side, -side, but really just side-by-sides in general are. Yeah, I mean, if you can think of something other than a side-by-side -side that's 100% bone stock and would get through here, uh, let us know and we'll try and take it through here. I mean, maybe that G-Wagon squared. Yeah. But probably not our Bronco. I don't think so. Well, just like the sign says, this is Home Free Hill. This is our last little obstacle and after making it through Tommy's demise, 
not worried at all. No, I'm not worried at all. Are we going all the way up to the left there? Uh, yeah, might as well, right? Yeah, see those tracks down there where it's like a little less snowy? Yeah. A lot of people have trouble when they get down there, they start spinning tires, but even still, I don't I think. I think we've got it. Yeah, I think we have it. Got some mud on my face there. Yeah, we need that. we need thunders. <laughs> Look at that. No problems at all. Beautiful. That was awesome. So yeah, that was just a ton of fun. Uh, as you can tell, beastly vehicle. In the snow, it doesn't matter. If it were dry out here, it would have done that at three times the speed. You can just have so much fun in a vehicle like this and it's purpose built to off-road like this. And you know, most of the time you're trailering them too. So you're not really worried like you are in a Jeep or a Bronco about needing that vehicle to get you home at the end of the day. Although still breaking something like this wouldn't be fun. Now, the only downside to this vehicle right here, while it is super, super capable, it's the price. To get a new one of these, you're looking at a starting price right around $42,000, which is a lot of money. And that's more than a lot of people pay for their main daily drivers, their cars. So is it awesome? Yeah, I had a blast in it and I love this machine, but that price is a little hard to swallow. With that said, there's always someone out there that is looking for something like this. And if you want the best, baddest, most capable side-by-side -side out there, this is definitely one to look at. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to head on over to alttfl.com. Catch you in the next video.